All right, everybody, we're going to take the truck camper out into the mountains. We're going to do some cross country skiing and the steelhead are running a little bit early this year. So maybe even some fishing. Either way, we're going to camp out, find some good spots to hang. We'll bring the bring the hound dog with us and have a good time. So stay tuned. Some cross country skis in here, um, some warm boots in the wintertime. We use these for our water jugs. Uh, we call water system in here will freeze over. And uh, a little extra propane tank in here. This is a great thing to have. All right, so there's some kind of fog warning. We just uh, crossed the pass. And it's snowing, it's really foggy. Yeah, we're going downhill. So, a little excitement. So, we just pulled off just to kind of take a breather. Pretty foggy, uh, pretty snowy. I think it's gonna be really cold tonight, maybe in the negatives, so. You can see our the snow's piled up pretty high. I'm gonna keep on trucking. <laughs> some, some fried chicken for the hound dog. Luckiest hound dog in the West right here. All right, you can pop it up. Yeah, you good. Go for it. Might be a little heavy. Might be some snow and ice on the top. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ready for a good night in the camper, Jack. Believe it or not, folks, this is a hound dog, not a human being. All right, we got a little creative with the camping last night. Found a pull off that seemed uh, appropriate and set up. We're gonna get things packed up here, drink some coffee, and get on our way soon. This is a little mountain meadow with a bunch of snowmobile tracks in it. Be a fun time to get out in the powder. And this uh, this trail is groomed. It's uh, a groomed path, and you can see the mountains out there. They're starting to clear up. Pretty spectacular view out here. Jagged peaks. Kind of, all the mountains are in the clouds right now, but it'll be clearing off soon when this sun heats everything up.
All right, you can see the frozen lake through the trees there, just at the base of the mountains. Sure is pretty out here. All right, everybody. You can see the mountains behind me and a big frozen lake. This is a lake we come to a lot. We spend a lot of time out here in the summer. Uh, it's a gorgeous place. But we're gonna go ahead and turn around and head out. There's a big snowmobile festival this weekend, so we're pretty sure people are gonna be come, are gonna be ripping down this trail uh, pretty shortly. So. Speak of the devil, the festival started. <laughs> So those are actually um, uh, four service law enforcement guys out here. So they got a pretty good gig. Not too bad. Uh, not too too bad of a gig to get to ride a, a snowmobile out here on the on Uncle Sam's dime. So it uh, got cloudy and started snowing a little bit. And the temperature really dropped like significantly. So we're boogieing out of here. Um, I'm gonna get back to the, the truck camper and heat up some food and get warmed up. So, all right, this is our last good view of the mountain. So we're headed back out the trail. Um, it's about uh, two and a half or three miles in one way, then you know two and a half or three out. Uh, so it's not a, a super long track, but it, it, uh, it gets you in the middle of nowhere pretty quickly. So, and you can see it's snowing harder and harder. Typically a little creek like this will be completely covered up by the snow, but we got a pretty low snowpack this year. So you can see the, uh, the creek is exposed. Some more snowmobilers enjoying the uh, groom trail here. There's a cool snow bridge. Usually the whole creek is covered up, but uh, just that's covered. Maybe there's a, a down tree or something. I, I don't know, but kind of a cool little, cool feature. We're almost out. Time for some lunch. Pretty cool, there's a bald eagle and a chunk of meat in the middle of the river here. Okay, so we're just getting set up and uh, obviously that involves unloading some things and rearranging some things. Um, there's a lot of storage in this camper, but not as much as you would think, but it's uh, still a great thing to have. What I'll do is rig up a generator and run a pretty long extension cord and then we'll run like an electric space heater all night. The propane heat is, is great in this thing, but it, it's kind of loud, but it uses a lot of propane. So we'll I have an indoor outdoor thermometer I keep and I hang the little uh, sensor up on the buckle that top of the camper down so I don't forget about it but also so I get an accurate reading and know how cold it is outside.
So this is a campsite maintained by the uh, BLM, Bureau of Land Management, and uh, it actually has uh, some pit toilets that are unlocked and open right now. A lot of times this area uh, has so much snow that you can't access these sites, but it's kind of a low snow year, so you can pull in. Um, you know, there's a few inches on the ground, but it's uh, certainly doable for a four-wheel drive pickup truck. Um, oh, it's nice to have these, these bathrooms to use. This truck camper does have a, a bathroom in it. It's called a Thereford cassette toilet. And um, I think they're oftentimes used in Europe in like uh, Volkswagens and, you know, little campers out there. Um, and you put RV antifreeze into the flush tank so that when you flush it, it flushes with antifreeze uh, and ke obviously keeps everything from freezing up when it's really, really cold out. So when I'm using the generator with this thing, I actually carry a 50 foot long extension cord. Um, this is a soft top pop-up camper. So even though I have a, a pretty quiet generator, you do hear it at night if you don't have some distance. And 50 feet gives you a little bit of room to work with. Um, you know, I have a like a 12 foot one I used for a long time, but it's just not that far away. 30 amp uh, cord on the, on the camper uh, has a little bit extra room. So, you know, I might have uh, maybe 65 or 70 feet uh, if I use, if I really pull that cord out also, but it's really thick and it's kind of a pain to deal with, especially in the winter time when it's cold. Um, obviously you have to have an adapter uh, to plug into uh, one of these typical uh, sockets. So make sure you have an adapter uh, if you've got one of these things. These sites are great because there's virtually no one out here this time of year and you know you can kind of let your dog run around as long as you get a keep a pretty good eye on him so it's kind of nice all right we're all set up so I'm gonna rearrange a few more things, then I might go down to the river and see if it's worth uh, casting a line in. So the river's right here. Camper's right there. This is the river. This is the Salmon River. We're kind of in between the Sawtooth and the Bitterroot Mountains right now. Found ya. All right, load up. Okay, this is pretty interesting. It's about the uh, Salmon and Stillhead runs. Downstream migrating salmon and steelhead called smolts are often diverted in the irrigation ditches and lost. These fish screens are strategically located in ditches to form fish barriers. Bypass pipes return the smolts to the Salmon River, allowing them to continue their, their journey. This program was initiated in the 1950s with funding by the National Marine Fisheries Service. Idaho Department of Fish and Game constructs and maintains these screens with cooperation of the U.S. Forest Service, BLM, and local irrigators and ranchers. <laughs> I didn't realize that. I guess these, uh, this is part of a system that uh, diverts water so that the smolts, the baby steelhead coming from the fisheries, don't get flushed into the irrigation ditches. Hmm, pretty cool stuff. So this is the boat ramp, uh, not in bad condition at all. A um, little bit of snow on it, but uh, not in bad condition. The, uh, there's some texture to it, so you can get out of here pretty easily. Not floated this stretch, it's a good stretch. Smells like fish. Little creek coming in here. 
the air. And I'm sure there's some fish right there in that seam. It's kind of an eddy in the current. Probably end up fishing tomorrow. That bald eagle was up there earlier. All right, I couldn't resist. Uh, as you can see, it's getting dark, so we're gonna try to catch maybe one fish. Um, rigged up a one fly, and uh, I got that in a pair of pliers, so didn't even bring the tackle box. We'll just make a few casts, see if we can pull one out of the hole at sunset here. Stick fish. So when you're euro nymphing like this, you have to be able to see your line to know if it's straight up and down, to know if you're uh, moving along with the current. And it's so dark, I can't see my line, so I'm kind of doing it all by feel right now. All right, broke that one off, so I'm going to head back to the camper. All right, so we're going to set the generator up. I'm going to do the uh, extended run uh, kind of setup I got, so I'll show you what I do. First things first, we're going to take this cap off. This generator will run uh, about eight hours on a full tank. When you're pulling like a 750 or 800 watt load. Um, and I mean, it's like right at eight hours. Get this cap and this uh, piece of fuel line with a bulb in it to prime it. Then I've got this cap. I drilled a hole and I drilled a breather hole in it too. Uh, I'm gonna put this in this gas can. Put that in there. And screw that cap on. Got our gas can right here. We got our bulb to prime it right there. And then uh, our gas can. Warm up for a second. It's pretty cold out here. Then we'll turn it on eco. And
got? You got something? Kingfisher out there. So deer and elk and bighorn sheep will come out of the high country and you know come down to the river. This is actually a, a field across the river, maybe a hay field or an alfalfa field. And zoom in, you can see the zigzags uh, coming down that that wash right there. Little little switchbacks. There's another one right there. Between those trees you can see the zigzags that's the trail and the tra so you can see the little trail through the through the willows here and sure enough we got some some beaver chew marks maybe uh i don't guess they've got a beaver lodge up here maybe that was a beaver i saw <laughs> with the green eyes. It's a very distinct trail. Some potentially ancient river junk and a potentially ancient, ancient uh, sawn log right there. Pretty cool. So last night was just under 20 degrees. Uh, they were calling for single digits, but I didn't get that cold, which uh, you know I'm certainly okay with. Drinking some coffee, having a nice uh, easy morning, and then uh, might try to do some fishing. Although it's uh, the middle of February, and you know there's a cold front, so it's not the most productive time to fish. Maybe we'll give it a shot here in a bit, though. All right, here we go. So tracks coming out of the water, obviously. You guys can actually see them really well in the video. I feel like that might be a river otter uh, track. Five toes, I guess, and kind of spaced closely together. This guy came out this morning. You can kind of see where the, well, you can see where he slipped out and made some slip marks and everything. <clears throat> Okay, this is pretty cool. So, pretty sure it's a river otter. You can see his tracks, and then his tracks stop, and you can see where he slid on his belly right there. Rolled around, did his river otter thing, and then kept trotting along. And the funny is, I, I walked right by it earlier, didn't notice it. He rolled around again right there. All right, so it's pretty cold out, but if I'm by a river and I got a fishing rod, I'm gonna be fishing. Um, we'll give it a shot. We'll kind of fish some of these deep holes, fish real slow, see if we can pick something up. And um, you know what they say, I mean, a bad day's fishing uh, better than a good day at work. So we'll give it a shot. Okay, so yesterday I fished up here where this uh, uh, creek was coming in. I actually think it's probably like an irrigation ditch, but uh, I was fishing that run out. We're gonna fish this deeper water over here and see if we can pick something up over there. Uh, it, you know, it was pretty dark. I didn't realize how much deeper it got down here. This is probably better water to fish because when it's cold, you know, the fish go deeper. This is an 11 foot three weight. Uh, a company called Syndicate makes it. They're, um, I think they're out of Knoxville, Tennessee. And um, I mean, this rod is unbelievably sensitive. It's, uh, it, it, it's a game changer. I mean, it's so, it's so dialed in. Uh, it's just a Lampson uh, liquid reel. It's like a, a value reel. I think it's a hundred dollar reel. I, I absolutely have hammered it in the last, but I guess I've had this rod 10 or 12 years now. Um, and uh, I actually broke the tip one time catching big browns on the Madison. And um, 
I kept I actually kept catching fish with a broken tip and uh, and then I you know reached out to syndicate they sent me a new tip um, I, I had to pay for it it wasn't free but uh, and then I was back in action again so it's a great setup I have this Euro nymphing fly line so you can cast it but it's not really great fly line to for casting uh, it's very sensitive though and then I just tie a blood knot to like a 12 foot long tapered leader um, I think it says Euro nymphing leader and then after that I connect the the leader to uh, some what's called cider line it's red and yellow and I just use a blood knot to tie that and I have about you know maybe 18 inches of cider um, I feel like I kind of you know I, I would like to have a little more than I have on now but this will do then I have a small tippet ring on there and then I'll tie some you know five weight uh, fluorocarbon leader on there there's actually ice floating in the river right now I just noticed it uh, that tells me things upstream were very very cold last night uh, supposed to be in the negative single digits and even though it didn't get that cold down here the fact that there's ice floating by right now tells me it was really cold up river so time to do some fishing come here Jack the dog comes out here thinks he's king of the jungle yeah come on Thing. Here, you want to get on camera? You want, you want to say something? See, your camera's stupid, Ted. I'll try the old mop fly again. Might have to fish for something smaller. Broke me off. You can see the ice on the rod tip. On my leader. Conditions might be a little rougher than I anticipated. Big chunks of ice are coming down. All this stuff must have frozen and then taken, uh, taken some time to kind of drift down river. <clears throat> we're about 60 miles from where we were yesterday, and uh, that that's definitely the coldest area. Um, so. I guess it took kind of all night for this stuff to drift down. But that's the same one from yesterday. Bald eagles up and down this river. Pretty cool. Well, there you are. Up to no good as usual. 
All right, so I cranked up the generator at about 6.45 last night. At about 3.30 this morning, it actually uh, ran out of gas. So um, my you know, little system worked, but the hose was too short, so it didn't uh, pull down from the bottom of the gas tank. I'll, I'll show you in just a second. Um, but interestingly, uh, it had a full tank when I started, and it sucked down maybe like half a gallon or three quarters of a gallon of gas. So um, it was, you know, about, I think, 20 degrees last night. Uh, it, I wonder if the fuel efficiency was decreased because of the cold temps, but it definitely used more fuel than normal. And we were pulling about 750 or 800 watts on the, on the heater all night. So. so as you can see, that's how much gas was in it. Snow cat on the back of a trailer. He's, he's probably taking that snow cat to the uh, snowmobile festival, which uh, would be pretty cool to show up with that thing. So here's that other little canal. As you can see, uh, we've got a spot right there where they can kind of let water in. And my guess is that goes over to where the uh, little steelhead smolt <coughs> system is. You can see the ice floating in it. Western skies. Oh, it's been going a while. You can see all the ice floating down, but it's really pretty. Look at that. Very, very cold. All right, it's a pretty spectacular view behind us. Folks, uh, we're going to head back over the mountain and uh, clean all this gear up. So thanks for watching. If you uh, like the video, click like, hit subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for some more adventures. Thanks so much.